late 1950s and early 1960s, prior to Beatlemania, one man and one band dominated the musical landscape. Cliff Richard and the Shadows. Come on, pretty baby, let's move it and groove it. Shake a baby, shake a honey, please don't lose. It is real and it gets into your heart and soul. And yeah, let me tell you, baby, it's called rock and roll. In July 1960, a remarkable thing happened. The Shadows released their own instrumental song, Apache. On the 25th of August 1960, it went to number one. In doing so, it displaced a Cliff Richard in the Shadow song, Please Don't Tease. Apache stayed at number one for five weeks. In a career that lasted for more than 50 years, producing five more number ones and more chart hits than even Sir Cliff Richard, the Shadows gave contemporary music a brand new sound and the guitar world one of its greatest guitar heroes Hank Marvin I liked the sound of it I liked certainly with the shadows come out that that sound really appealed to me I... Hank was the master of sound he was influential to all of our generation <laughs> Fast forward to 2020, and in the streets of Adelaide, their influence can still be heard to this day. Tower in the Shadow Castles. So why do you live in Adelaide now? Well, one, my daughter's here. So it's to be close to her. And two, there's more opportunity here for playing music than there is in Millicent. Yeah. Where everything's been shut down and places sort of dying slowly. So. Mm. Last 2019, an Adelaide street performer put an ad on Facebook looking for any musicians interested in forming a Shadows tribute band. I've never asked you this, but what, why did you put the ad up on Facebook? Well, I went busking for a while and after a while I sort of got bored of playing by myself. It was suggested to me by another busker that I maybe I should give it a go. I wanted to play some musicians instead of just by myself all the time and do something with it. When you put the ad out, what was the response like? What happened? Well, it overwhelmed me. I didn't think I'd get many people jumping on it at all, and um, lots of people jumped on it. My name's Terry, and I'm the bass player in the Shadowcasters. G'day, my name's Paul Houndy Hounslow. I'm officially known as Houndy in the band. I play drums with the Shadowcasters. And I very much enjoy it. My name is Baz Elliott, and I play guitar in the Shadowcasters.
So how did I meet Dion? Well, I'd seen him around the mall a bunch of times over the years. Amazing. Um, I answered an ad that he put on Facebook. Yeah, I think it was one of the first. Got the job, met up a couple of weeks later at a rehearsal room, and we had a first rehearsal. We played Apache first up. It was amazing. We had it right from the first time we played it. It was just incredible. My first impression of when we put the band together was wow. We had been in a room for 10 minutes. At the end of the first song, we just kind of all looked at each other and went, wow. I've been in bands for months that haven't got that tight in their first go. It was incredible. We just knew we had it. So we walked in and set up and we played Apache. And it was like we'd already, we've, we've been practicing it for months and months already and it was really good. Dion. How did I meet Dion? Well, I was shopping in Rundle Mall one Saturday afternoon. I'm walking past this busker who's doing a wonderful rendition of Wonderful Land. And I remember thinking, hmm, nice. It was obvious that he was having some technical problems with his equipment. I went over to him and by process of elimination, we worked out that maybe he was having a bit of a problem with one of his leads or so. But anyway, eventually, we got him back live and then he, he launched into FBI. And I found myself doing the dance steps with him as a small crowd developed. At which point, I sort of made a quick exit and left the to wallow in the glory of this great crowd. That was a nice first meeting. quickly was that uh, Dion, yeah, he could do with some help. He's had a pretty rough trot, my mind and Ella, and you know, he could, you know, he could do with some help. Is it? <laughs> yeah, show us, show us your arm, man. Alright, so this is my arm. As you can see, it doesn't go straight. Yeah. It's um, a little bit deformed. It's got a bit of muscle missing up here. There's a rod from my shoulder to my elbow. Because of that, I can't work. Nobody will give me a job. But two centimetres each way, the doctor said, and I would have um, cut my arm off. So, cut off entirely. Yeah. Wow. How did that happen? Um, stacking posts um, on the back of a cambio machine. And it grabbed the back of my hand, the back of my shirt, the bag belt, and just sort of sucked. Something like When was that? Five years ago. Okay. The guy's just got so much talent, and after his industrial accident, nearly losing his arm, the way he can play that guitar, it's incredible, it's inspiring, but he hasn't given up. So yeah, we're trying to help Dion out. We're trying to get him on stage, you know, get him in front of an audience, get him earning some money. You know, and I think for Dion, going to be really important just to get him up in front of as many people as we can like. I've helped Dion out with you know, guitar strings when he busks, you know, uh, batteries for his busking amp, bought him a couple of shirts I think over the journey. Uh, I do a few things for Dion to help him out, he does a bit tough, I work in a cafe and sometimes we've got some food left over, good quality food. And he's, you know, takes some food and stuff, and bought him a couple of shirts as well, just chips in here and there. Sometimes we need to get a shirt for the band, whatever. Might dip it in my pocket for that. It's nothing major. It's a very small price to pay. Terry won't talk about it. What What have I done for Dion? Um, oh look, when I carried out that technical repair, I didn't charge him a call out fee. Terry's been fantastic. He's organised the fringe shows for us because he's been in the fringe on his own as a solo artist a number of times. You, you, you help me I, 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 quite, a, quite a lot. If I ever need anything, you're always there for me. I really appreciate that. Um. Well, good that I've got friends and a nice love to help me and want to get somewhere playing the music at the same time, so that's very good.
What next? Um, look, the Shadowcasters are, are becoming an established band. Where we've got this plan to attack the Adelaide Fringe in 2020. Well, I'm pretty positive about what we're doing. Um, I love playing music with you guys. Anyway, it's good fun, and um, I think that we've got a good future ahead of us. We're starting to get bookings, and people are liking liking what we do, and, and yeah. Uh, Dion is an incredible talent, the band give him great support, the four of us have a real real connection on stage, you can really see it, the guys move out the front, they've got all the shadows moved. So my message to you is, um, get some tickets for the Shadowcasters show at the Jade on Franklin Street. Look, it's worth the ticket, please. We're at the Fringe, February and March, six shows. Be there or be square. Please come and see us at the fringe. So one, two, three. Please, Please come, come and see, see us, us at, at the fringe. fringe. <laughs> <laughs> Funny little English dude, but he's really cool. <laughs> <laughs>